Hey everybody, um, so uh, I, uh, this is a video that I, I think I promised that I would do or I talked about doing. Um, so there's been a lot of, a lot of videos where people talk about the contrast paints and uh, I know it's like a year later or whatever and I, I did a video where I I wanted to see what the contrast paints would look like over, like, if I did my very best attempt at doing a Zenithal Prime paint job, you know, where, um, like, I take the airbrush and I do, I just create those, those kind of artificial light sources where I've got, like, a good grayscale painting that's already done on the, on the miniature, and then I kind of glaze color over that. Um, so I wanted to see if, uh, if doing that and, and then using the contrast paints over that, if I could just get a kind of transparent layer of, of, uh, color and then, you know, just do a one and done kind of thing, or at least have it as a jumping off point, you know, like to, to do something else later. Like if I wanted to just get some color on like an army or something and play with it you know, and then come back to it later and work on the paint job later. And, um, yeah, you know, it, it, it worked. Um, I, I was not blown away. You know, I was kind of like underwhelmed with the, uh, with the end result. And, um, so, but I realized that, um, that I've been making my own for a long time. Like I've done all these videos where I, would speed paint, you know, like batch paint a squad of guys that I wanted to use for something, whether it was a game, you know, like a D&D &D encounter or like a, a, just a bunch of guys for, uh, you know, a skirmish game or something like that. Um, and, and my solution was to mix equal part, to, to mix, um, well, I'm a Vallejo guy, so I, I would mix game ink and then I would use like something like Model Air or Model Color, which are typically there. It's a lot thinner consistency. It's runnier and it's not quite as opaque. And they have really, they they're 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 very matte. The uh, the colors are are very very matte. They have a very matte finish, and that's by design. Like um, Vallejo, I looked it up on their website because I was curious about this because I was talking to other people about it and um, Vallejo um, so they if you don't know they have their whole universe of paints you know they have everything from like artists paints you know like they have their own oil paints and acrylics and um, they have you know they have they have model paints that are specifically formulated to go through the airbrush just for use on like Gundams, you know, like mechs that you would build model kits. And the reason being that they have like a, a kind of a satin finish and then they add things to them like shellac that makes them a little bit more durable if they have parts like, you know, arm joints or whatever where they're, they're moving around and then they, um, so, it, you know, it just makes the paint a little bit tougher. And then, you know, they have their own like weathering effects for those. But the, the, the model color is more aimed at towards, like the model color in Vallejo Model Air is more aimed at um, like uh, people who want to do like historical modeling or like, you know, like they would have colors like um, German gray, um, you know, like uh, US Air Force green, um, Afghanistan mud, you know, things like that. Where and and then the colors from model color match up with colors from model air, and then the same thing with game color and game air. But the um, the the game game color and game air are typically they're more like um, bright, more saturated colors, like uh, more sort of cartoony looking. In, in a word, you know, like they, they, they're more suited towards like fantasy kind of stuff instead of like historic war gaming. So, um, but my, my whole intent was, is that 
the, the inks are not all created equal. Like um, with inks, there's, there's, it's, I, I did some research into this, I thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, inks seem to be sort of just a catch-all term for anything that is um, very liquid, you know, form of like pigments or whatever. Um, and, and it's not necessarily even pigments because they could be made out of dyes, which are, you know, like liquid by nature. And then they have all kinds of other things that they add to them, like um, if you've ever used watercolor pencils, um, the binder in watercolor pencils is gum Arabic. And it's the same stuff that when you buy like a new paintbrush, it has that little bit of like hair gel kind of stuff in the end of it, you know, that keeps the brush like that nice little shape. That's gum Arabic and it's just, it's a water soluble binder, basically, um, you know, think like hair gel that you would find in like a, a brush or whatever. But it's it's also um, shiny and it's water soluble. So if you draw with watercolor pencils, you can go back over it with water and then soften it or, or do watercolor over it and sort of push it around, you know, and things like that. And then there's shellacs, which, you know, again, are like glossy. Or in the case of of the artist inks that a lot of people like to airbrush with, especially in miniature painting, like uh, F.W. Dallarani or um, Liquitex, where they have, they, they use this term color fast, which um, what it really means is that they add a polymer. Basically, it's like a very, very thin, liquidy acrylic paint because one, they're using pigments. They're just very, very fine pigments. And two, they add a polymer to their emulsion or their, their binder that is color fast, meaning that if you use water on it after you've, you know, put it down, it will not come, it, will, it won't turn liquid again. You won't be able to push it around with more water. Um, like a, like a watercolor or something like that, where you can sort of rehydrate it and then push it around, push the pigments around. So all that that means is like when you when you see like Dalarani, their FW inks, they they dry flat, non gloss, and then they they are color fast, meaning that they have like a a binder of like a plastic binder, like an acrylic paint, where it basically it turns to plastic when you put it down and you can't wet it again and push over it. And, uh, and, and same thing with like Liquitex. You see with a lot of, a lot of the miniature paint people on YouTube, they use either Dollar Rowney FW inks or they use Liquitex and then they use the Color Fast inks. So yeah, doing like a deep dive into this, I, I found out some stuff. Um, so with the inks, um, it being a sort of catch-all term, there are solutions versus suspensions versus, say, like an emulsion. Um, and an emulsion is not something that you would see in a mini. In like, it's 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 a, a suspension of oil, like like mayonnaise or like hollandaise sauce is an emulsion. So so it's it's a suspension that involves like some kind of a fat. And then a suspension is a different thing. So acrylic paint is a suspension. Um, like the very first pigments that people used, you know, when we were cavemen, we were digging pigments out of the ground, was the ground. Like, like you see pigments that are like charcoal or like burnt umber is, or raw umber, raw sienna, burnt sienna, are colors that are just dug straight out of the ground their earth tones, and then they either burn them or they use them plain to get the, uh, the, the color that they were looking for. And, and they're very classical tones like that you see in a lot of like Renaissance, uh, like sketching and stuff like that. People use the, the raw umber, raw sienna, burnt sienna, colors like that. And they're, they're very, very old pigments and they're just, just basically dug out of the ground. Like the color lamp black, they got the pigments from using the soot from like oil lanterns 
and it was just a nice black pigment. And then they suspend that in something like with oil paints, the binder is oil. It's linseed oil. Or in acrylics, the binder is a polymer. It's a plastic polymer. So, um, so yeah, with the, the Liquitex and the, the like Dalarani um, FW inks, they're actually acrylic paint. They're just in sort of an ink format. Like a solution, um, a solution versus a suspension. If you think of a solution, a solution is going to be like Kool-Aid versus a suspension is, think of like, um, swirled, like sort of like muddy water. Where like Kool-Aid, if you mix up the sugar into Kool-Aid with the color and the water and everything, basically you can leave that Kool-Aid in the fridge forever. The sugar is never going to settle at the bottom. It's a permanent um, solution. It's been completely dissolved and it's turned into its own thing. It's a solution. Um, a suspension is going to be like... Um, Think of like the contrast paints where you walk into the store and then you see that there's like a little bit of like talc kind of stuff that is settled at the bottom and then you have to shake it up to get to make sure that it's not glossy um, because the, the pigments, you know, will settle to the bottom. And often that's a bad sign with paints is if, is, is if, the, if the pigments have settled to the bottom of the paint and you really have to work hard to shake it up. It means that the pigments are, are pretty dense. It means that they, they don't want to stay suspended in the cells of the, the, the polymer. And like when you thin them out, you get that sort of coffee staining look that, you know, like contrast paints and, and a lot of like washes and things like that are kind of notorious for where you get the, the look like you spilled coffee and then wiped it up. You know, like that's the, the, the kind of coffee staining look. Um, but so what I wanted to, what I, what I typically do is I take half and half. I take the ink, which is a solution, and then I mix it with the, you know, the paint with the, the nice fine particles that's already thinned out, like an airbrush paint that's not completely opaque. It's sort of designed to atomize and like, and also airbrush paints, typically there's, they, they have additives in them. They have flow improvers, they have um, uh, wetting agents, they have things that are designed to make it go better through the airbrush, like a flow improver or a surfactant, a surface acting agent, that is going to reduce the surface tension and it's going to make it spray better and atomize better and, and also reduce some of the wear and tear inside of your airbrush because it's going to be it's not going to want to stick to the metal parts inside of your airbrush as much. And that's why it's important to like prime your models before you airbrush, use airbrush paints and things like that. But also um, they typically have something in them that makes them slow, it makes it slow down the drying time a little bit as well. So, and those are good things for the properties of like a, a contrast paint because you want the as it dries, you want it to dry slowly, and then you don't want to have as much surface tension, so you want those pigments to sort of slough off the, the raised edges and then settle into the little valleys. So you have peaks and valleys, and it does that work for you, where it does some of the highlighting and shading for you. So anyways, I was keeping all that in mind when I was trying to mix up my own, and um, I feel like this is a no barking. Uh, this is to me. This is a superior contrast paint because the the addition of something like an airbrush paint and then the inks just makes the perfect densely pigmented wash. And I'll show you show you the results. Hey everybody, um, so yeah, I'm just gonna assume that future me kind of explained why I'm doing what I'm doing right now. 
Um, and then I'm just going to share with you some, some of these recipes that have worked really well for me. So this right here is um, equal parts uh, Vallejo Game Ink um, skin wash and Vallejo model color wood grain. Um, and then, so this is kind of interesting. <laughs> this is a, this is a mini that I was working on and then I used the, uh, the skin wash on it. And I thought that it looks, you know, it, I wanted, to, it does look like a sort of darker skin color, but it almost looks like cartoonishly red, like, um, like some kind of offensive, like Native American stereotype thing. But it does make a really nice looking wood. Um, so, so yeah, these guys, um, these are from a, a previous video, you know, kind of part of where all this started. Um, I have done this, I've done this a lot in the past where I'll mix up the game inks and then the model color because the model color is ultra matte. It has an ultra, you know, matte, um, glossless finish. And then the game inks are transparent. So when you mix the two together, you kind of get both best of both worlds. You get the transparency of the game inks and you get the ultra matte, um, you know, kind of dense, um, dense colors of the, the model color. So, um, so yeah, this is the, this is what th this, um, recipe looks like when it's, when it's done, when it's, uh, or when it's all dry and everything, and you can see that there's, I missed a spot right there. There's, uh, you know, no, no glossiness. And then it's, and it's definitely like running into the recesses and then sort of coloring the, but it is covering like the black. So I've talked about this before where if you have areas on your minis that are black, it sort of makes it look like a hole, like a hole in the ground. But with this, you know, it does, it, the, the Xenothal Prime shows through, but it also kind of colors it, makes it a shade of brown at the same time, if that makes sense, because um, I want, you know, I want them to be like a deep, dark shade of brown and not a, um, not you know black if that if that makes sense i want my shadows to be a very dark brown and not black so it does sort of color over the you know the it it, it makes the black a dark brown instead if you get what i'm saying so anyways that's like a side by side comparison of the zenithal prime and then with this dried over it and then i'm going to use it on these guys um, i'm going to get anywhere that's, you know, wood on these guys. And um, I'm just gonna show you, I'm gonna show you real quick um, how, how I put this stuff on, because I think it's worth, it's worth talking about a little bit. Um, so I've got like, I'm not gonna use like a giant shade brush or whatever. This is just a, um, this is a Taclon um, Taclon is like their type of brush. It's a synthetic brush and it's basically fishing line. That's what Taclon is, is fishing line. And then I am not going to flood the whole, the whole tip of the, I'm just going to get, I'm going to use this and I'm just going to put, let me just shake it up. I'm going to just put like that much on the tip. Whoops. That's almost too, that's a little bit too much. So I want it to be like halfway full. And then um, I'm going to paint with it like, like normal. Um, so I'm not just going to, I'm not going to flood it, you know, uh, I'm not going to, this isn't like a shade or a, a, like a, a shade brush or like a big, you know, heavy brush, like I am trying to be neat and and then I'm just going to go around and paint with it and I'm going to do uh, one, you know, one coat on there. But kind of thick, you know, to just get good coverage. 
and it's just like just the right amount of uh, of opacity, just the right amount of like, because I, I basically just want to glaze a color on top of my xenthal paint job. And just sort of color everything, just add a, add a sort of transparent color layer on top of my airbrush. But I'm using a smaller brush because so I, I want to be kind of careful. So you can see that it's already, like we need to wait for it to dry so I can show you how, that it doesn't dry glossy at all because that's important. But you can see that it's already got those um, shadows and everything kind of developed. So I just want to keep those. Because this is a really good way to like speed paint a whole army, you know, of guys. And then if I want to, I can come back to them later. And it's still, you know, it's a good foundation to do like a really good paint job later. So I'll show you what it looks like when they're dried. Okay, so uh, these these guys are not totally dry yet, so there's they're gonna be a little bit, you're gonna see a little bit of that glossiness, but try to touch. Um, if I turn it around, you can see how I've got my shadows in there, and then I have my highlights, and they're already pretty developed. So what I can do with that is just, you know, like kind of dry brush over it a little bit and that'll get rid of all the coffee staining. But on the wood, you know, it doesn't look bad for wood grain, not at all. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna let these guys get totally dry. But there's a, another um, difference. Uh, so, you know, this is this is not going to be my my Vallejo version. This is a different thing um, or, or a different, uh, kind of uh, recipe. Um, so I, I did a, uh, I was kind of practicing on a bunch of these uh, skinks that I got off of eBay and then like, they're the old, they're like the 90s version, you know? So I got these guys, like the shipping was more expensive on these guys than they were. So I thought they'd be fun to experiment on. But I mixed up a, um, a blue color, which, you know, is like the base color for these guys and then just did a little bit of dry brushing on top of them. Um, where's, where's the one that's like most of the way done? Yeah, you can kind of see this guy like, I like the, um, the finished um, paint scheme. You know, let me know if you guys, if you're interested in seeing how this, how I do this paint scheme. Um, like I was just kind of playing with this, but um, right, say, you know, say something in the comments or something if you want to see, like how to how to do this paint scheme. Um, but uh, the 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 blue, you know, is is uh, is. So here's here's a guy that's that's primed, right? So you can see that he does have this black kind of shadows, and this guy definitely has you know blue, like the. This has a little bit better coverage, but it's still, you know, um, it's the same kind of thing. But I did, I used a different kind of recipe. So I'm using um, some of these uh, Dalarani FW inks. And then um, I'm using uh, Vallejo um, uh, model, model, uh, or not model, game air. So yeah, there's there's a, a reason behind that. Um, so the FW inks are a color fast ink. They are um, they and they use pigments. And what that means is that there's a polymer that's added to these. A lot of people like to airbrush with these. So they're a very you know it's a very thin, like runny consistency. But the the colors dry matte and like non-gloss and because they're they're pigments not um not dyes like an ink and uh and then the um 
the uh, the game color, sorry, game color and game air have a little bit better coverage. They're a little bit more opaque colors, and um, you know, again, they're they're matte. They dry very matte, but they also have very um, sort of bright saturated colors, um, as opposed to the you know the the model color. Like they they specialize more in like military kind of range colors, like German gray or you know Afghanistan mud or whatever. But this is equal parts Dollar Rowney FW ink, and then, um, okay, I lied. It is it is um, Model Air, but this the the Model Air dries ultra matte. So if there is any, you know, it's it's the same thing where it's the the all of the Model Air and Model Color colors are have an ultra matte finish. So if you mix together, you know, one part um, ink and then one part model air, you're gonna get something that dries very, very matte. It has a, it has a, um, a very matte finish, but it still has those same properties of the, um, you know, of like an ink. It's a very, it's a very thin, runny consistency. And it does sort of settle in the cracks. So let's say that you don't have a good art supply store near you, or um, you know this stuff can be a little bit pricey. Um, I would say go on Dick Blick. Dick Blick Art Materials. They they have a great selection. They have really good prices, and you can get this stuff online there, or maybe Amazon. But this um, is uh, Liquitex, which is the, um, this, you know, is very similar. It's another color fast ink that has, um, uh, you know, a polymer in it. So it's not going to come up like it's not going to come up from handling it or, um, you know, just getting it wet. Uh, so, yeah. This is, this is good stuff too. And you can definitely airbrush with this stuff too. Just as good as you can airbrush with this. But uh, what I wanted to try was, I wanted to try the cheap stuff. <laughs> so this is uh, Bombay. This is the stuff. Um, by the way, yeah, Liquitex. You can get Liquitex at um, uh, Michael's. Michaels carries this stuff. In case you don't have a good art supply store around you, you probably have a Michaels around you somewhere. Um, so this is the cheap stuff. This, <laughs> this is like, you can find this at Hobby Lobby. Um, this is uh, Bombay and um, it's way too glossy. It dries way too glossy on its own. But you can see like, well, you can't really. It's, it's transparent, like you can see through the bottle sort of. Um, I just shook this stuff up so it's full of air bubbles, but this is transparent. So if uh, if I add this to say some Vallejo model air or some uh, model color, it should knock all the gloss right out of it. So I want to see if I can make a red, like a deep red for, you know, just for making like shadows, like deep, for making um, like dark, uh, a dark red, for stuff like this, so that um, so that I can go in and just put in my shadows, and then go over it and define all the highlights later. Okay, so this is I'm gonna try and make a um, sort of a deep, um, sort of deep deep red with a combination of this um, this Bombay red violet and then some Avalon Hill Model Air rust. And, uh, and then this is the, this is another thing that I had is a little bit of this wetting agent. And then this is basically, it's just, it reduces the surface tension so that um, it will f flow into the cracks a little bit more. And um, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm just gonna add equal parts of this
And if this works, if I, you know, if I can get some good out of these, because they're way, I mean, I'm never gonna use these for anything else. I just, I got them to experiment with. They're way too glossy to use for, for painting. Um, if I can get some good, like, DIY kind of contrast paint out of this, then that's a huge win for me because I'm never gonna use them for anything else. Also, Vallejo, you know, they're great paints and they're cheap. Oh, I forgot to add the wedding agent. Just gonna add a drop of this. And some people use like dish soap, some people use um, uh, just it was a wetting agent, is, it's a surfactant basically. It's just a surface acting agent and it's sort of, it's. A, but this is going to slow down the drying time and it's also going to help things flow into the cracks a little bit more. So that's what you want. You want things as it dries, you want the pigments to sort of slough off of the raised edges and then flow into the cracks. So this is just gonna help, help with that. It's kind of a nice purple. Hmm. Do I do I want to use this on these guys? Because <laughs> I do kind of want to make their little clay, uh, capes red. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do it. Try it. All right, we'll see if the model error knocked enough of the gloss out of these guys. <laughs> Just flooding this, flooding this poor brush with this stuff. All right, so these guys are still drying, so I won't know uh, if the, that totally knocked the gloss out of it until they're totally dry. But um, what I can do now, so I've got my shadows in, is I can go around and do some edge highlighting. And you know, like I don't totally hate the like burgundy color. Um, I just, I wanna put in some, you know, it's, it doesn't look bad on its own, actually. Like, uh, who has the most of this? This guy, he looks, he, I, I kinda like it. Kinda like it, not gonna lie, like, I actually, I like the, uh, um, they look like they have been sort of buried in the ground and maybe, you know, at one point their, uh, their uniforms were bright red and now they're kind of, um, you know, muted colors. But so I'm just gonna go around and, one thing that I am happy about though, is that I don't see the like coffee staining. Um, so I can just go around and do some edge highlighting, you know, to kind of pick things out like, And you know, that's that's what I really want this stuff for is to kind of get my shadows in and get those up to where, I'm, I'm not sure that I even want something where it's totally one coat and done. Um, you know, what I, what I want to do is just, I want to be able to airbrush them, you know, do a good Zenithal highlight throw on something that will put in those shadows. And then, um, you know, go back and like, 
dry brush or edge highlight later. And like I'm actually doing a little bit of wet blending right now because this stuff is still wet. But you know, I could let them get bone dry. Like I could, I could take these guys to a game or something, you know, I could throw on, like I could do my, my airbrush thing and then I can get everybody in one pass and then, uh, you know, come back to them later. And then I can throw on something, just a shade that will get all those shadows in place and, and somewhere where I'm happy with it. And then, um, you know, maybe even take them to a game or something or use them to where they're mostly painted, you know, where I'm not just like embarrassed by having a bunch of gray plastic on the table. And then um, come back to it later and also have it be something where if I wanted to, I could keep going with it and get it up to a really nice standard. So I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, this is already drawing really flat and non-gloss. So that's a that's a big win for me. That I feel like I'm I'm really happy with that. So anyways. Okay. So I went around on these guys and did some some edge highlighting, you know, uh, kind of uh, just picked out some some highlights and stuff on these guys on their um, and then on this guy I did, so I, st I didn't do any edge highlighting on this guy. And you can see how this is actually, it's not completely dry yet. The wetting agent makes it take a really long time to dry. Um, I edge highlighted all the rest of these guys. And this is still kind of tiny, tiny bit dry, but it's, you can see how it dries like non-gloss, the, um, the, the finish like in the shadows and stuff is non-gloss. So it did pretty much totally knock the gloss out of those inks. Um, <clears throat> and uh, and then this is this is the, the wood color. And then I just did a little kind of dry brush I highlight on the shield to kind of show you the, you can still see the, it's got its nice shadows in place and then it's got its highlights. And that's basically just one coat of transparent color. Um, but you can see on this guy, like the, the highlights are kind of this muted, like pink color. That's because the, the red is, is pretty transparent. Um, and then you're going over white. So when you're going over the black, it looks burgundy. You know, it comes out looking burgundy, but when you go over white, it comes out looking pinkish. So, and then here's the version that's, you know, edge highlighted. So anyways, yeah, that's that's a, that's a success for me. That's a huge win, and um, yeah, I, I will I'll, I'll be using these guys in the future. You know, these these they're they're good. They're good paints. Um, so so yeah, I'll refer people back to this. But this is kind of interesting. So you can see on this guy, he's his. This is supposed to be wood, or I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be wood on his shield. And um, you can see the coffee staining because it doesn't have the wood grain to it. It has like the coffee staining on it because it just has one kind of solid raised edge and it doesn't have anywhere for the paints to flow into. So you get that coffee staining look, which, you know, can make a nice looking leather on its own. But, uh, but yeah, anyways, so kind of interesting. So yeah, um, I did go ahead and finish these guys off camera. Like it was mostly just the weapons, like the metallic stuff, um, <clears throat> doing uh, some kind of rust effect stuff. But um, the uh, the bases is just that's the the raw Zenithal Prime. Um, but yeah, really effective way to bang out a whole army of little dudes and bring them up to a high tabletop standard. Just this is all you know, kind of transparent glazes over one coat one zenithal kind of grayscale paint job and then either a little bit of etch highlighting or some dry brushing you know or like some kind of weathering effects so really really simple uh easy way to bang out a pretty pretty high quality paint job on a bunch of dudes 
But uh, yeah, we um, we went way over this this really long video. People on YouTube typically have like a 10 minute attention span. So, you know, uh, thanks for watching the whole thing. <laughs> and uh, welcome to all my new subscribers. And uh, thanks for watching. And just remember um, that when you think inks, think um, suspension or not suspension, uh, solution and kind of transparent. And when you think paints, think uh, suspension and more opaque. So when you add them together, you get something in between. But, uh, but yeah, more, I'm gonna keep using these paints. They're good stuff. All right, take care.